Welcome to another Founder Wisdom Pod with Kelly Joe, okay, KJ Kony Khan. Uh, Kelly Joe is founder and psychotherapist at Tidy Lodge. She's advanced in EMDR intensives and EMDR for the ones that don't know stands for eye movement, desensitization and reprocessing. We're going to discuss about that today. She's transforming high achievers in a week and she's creating pattern shifts uh, with permanence. So we're going to talk about mindset, healthcare, EMDR, relationships and wellness at work. This pod is brought to you by podpire.com. If you want to start your own podcast, if you want to monetize the unconventional way and scale, you can go to podpire.com. KJ, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and about Tidy Lodge. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think that was a fantastic introduction, Charles. So thank you very much. Uh, Tidy Lodge has been around for five years now. Uh, I was trained in EMDR extensively uh, about four years ago. I was introduced. Uh, I actually had EMDR done myself in the UK um, and did about two months worth of it. And then that's when the journey began. And I, I had set up the company by then uh and uh yeah basically uh my mission is to uh change the world one life at a time <laughs> and work with the people who who have the power to do that uh and um want to uh, catapult their their growth and their success so that's T tidy lodge's mission in a nutshell really cool so yeah singapore there's a bunch of uh, high achievers in there, professionals, CEOs, founders. Is that who you work with? Absolutely. Um, apparently, uh, Singapore has the um, uh, the Forbes 500 list and uh, the uh, highest, um, I think it's the highest millionaire per capita uh, in the world. Uh, so we have a lot of high achievers here. Um, and uh, it. how did it start? Uh, it just started with a select number of clients who started to come to Tidy Lodge. Uh, I was doing executive coaching as well as psychotherapy. So um, I noticed that there was gaps uh, when I was studying the two and bridging those gaps. I noticed that a lot of people working with high achievers, the executive coaches that were working with them, they uh they came to me and said that they lacked the training the psychotherapy training to to be able to get to to some of the deeper work so i started to get these referrals and then i was uh doing the trainings for emdr executive coaching and had already done the the psychotherapy training and collectively having all of that has allowed me to produce uh this um framework that we do at tidy lodge which is uh, now uh, called advanced EMDR intensives because I'm trained in multimodalities of EMDR as there's various ones out there and we know of standard protocol which targets PTSD single event what we would call a single event trauma and then we also have the inner complexities uh, of of trauma which is complex trauma which the majority honestly Charles the majority of us on this planet have because the systems are not in place for us to thrive as yet we are still evolving uh as, as a uh you know the everybody on the planet is still evolving right so you know we haven't got there yet uh so this complex PTSD these this EMDR framework works with this and also you know one of the main commodities of these executives right and not just executives but they're entrepreneurs or they're they're um, you know they're just they're, they're sort of highly successful people that are stuck in some way internally so their internal is not matching their external and they want to bridge the gap between the two so who they are externally with what they're doing isn't 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 matching. So they want that to come together. And uh, the intensives, basically, uh, what I found is I found a couple of practitioners in the world who had started this and it's doing the EMDR in three to five days. Now, with other frameworks, this wouldn't work because you can't, you know, use talk therapy and talk to someone 
every day for three to five days. It's just not going to get the same impact that needs to be spread out. So other modalities really need to be spread out in order to, to get an effect or a result. But with this, because you get instant results, when you compact it together, the, the brain, what we call an EMDR, the brain's adaptive information processing system, where it is able to kind of reset itself, but we haven't been taught as children how to do that. EMDR does that for us. EMDR is the catalyst to do that. And then what it does is because it works instantly, when you do it compact over three to five days, the results are exponential. So in terms of when you're talking about relationships, it literally changes people's relationship patterns at work, internally their self-relationship, externally with family, um, I'm sure you've heard of attachment styles. So I work uh, very closely with attachment styles and belief systems and uh, their insecure attachment style from childhood can change to one of security. Uh, and that is something that is very rare to to be able to do and change. So, you know, this is kind of monumental. And as you can see, I'm very passionate and excited about it. <laughs> And how is it instant? Like, what is the therapy? Can we get more details on how it works and why it's instant via other styles of therapy? Yeah. Okay. So it works collectively on uh, belief systems, as I mentioned. So negative beliefs that lead to a certain pattern of habits or behaviors. It works somatically. So we're also working and mapping the body. So at the same time, you're working with it's what we would call a bottom up approach versus a top down approach, top down being from brain to body. This is from body to brain. So what's happening is we're working with the entire nervous system collectively. So we're covering all the components. Um, we're working with memories. Uh, we can even now, uh, from what I've understand and learned from advanced EMDR, we can even work with false memories because the false memories are almost like dreams. They give us a portal into uh, what is necessary to target. So we're looking for something specific to target. Um, and then we're also working with, we can work with the emotions and we I can work with the parts of a person's personality where they may not even realize that this is a part of themselves that is developed for many years that, that, that sometimes we believe is something that has helped us grow and it has been there and it has served us. But maybe as we grow older, this part of ourselves doesn't serve us anymore. And so we're also working with these parts of self to integrate the person as a whole. So we're covering all these components. Um, and the uh, talking piece is more about the investigative procedure. So we're investigating to ensure that we get accurate targets to get to the result that the person wants. So, so for me, you're also working on past, present and future. So for me, this is almost like you're getting your your life coaching, your executive coaching, and your therapy all in one. Um, when we're using this framework, which is the advanced version of EMDR, the attachment version of EMDR, and also the intensive collectively, with also using coaching questions to shift block processing, during when someone is doing the EMDR. Now, I know this can sound very foreign and like another language for some people out there. So just to so that you can understand what happens in a session, Charles, um, you can have someone sat there or laying down, either works, whichever's their preference. We, although it's called eye movement, we're not just using eye movement. We do use eye movement often, but for some people, they have other preferences and we notice things shift with other forms of bilateral stimulation, we call it. So you're stimulating right and left hemisphere of brain and of the brain, and also you're activating right and left body. So collectively, that's where everything we're getting the shift. Now, if you imagine whenever you've been upset, down, stressed at work, whatever it might be, you know, we're here, right? We're here. We're in the head. And and why are we not getting that shift? Why does rumination come? Why are we fixated on things? You know, why are we sort of obsessing about a particular thing and it's not moving? 
it's because collectively we haven't been taught the evolution of what our bodies can do. And this creates that shift quickly. And for me, this is monumental and paramount. And I tell you, if we can use AI to do some of this in the future, then, you know, it's not going to be reliant on a single person who has an expiry date like myself. Um, so just going back to uh, what happens in, in, in the session, um, the bilateral stimulation is so when I say right and left, you might be following my fingers and your eyes are following my fingers. But there's, you know, when you see this, it can look a bit like, hmm, OK, but that's because when we see EMDR done in the movies on series, you know, it. I think it was in Billions and I think it was in um, several TV shows um, not coming to mind right now, Russian Doll, maybe. Uh, and um, I think it's been in CSI and it just looks like they're following a light bar. So we also have this light bar and they're following the light bar back and forth. But there's a whole eight phases to this where, you know, we're taking the person's history and we are like detectives and we have to investigate and make sure we know what we're targeting. You know, I, I have to know, you know, like what has made like say you, for example, Charles, I would need to know what's made you up from from birth to now. And then we know what to target. So this is a whole piece of it. And then we know what to desensitize. And the desensitization piece is phase four. And then we do installation. And so the eye movement piece is a small part, but it's a small part that becomes a big part because it does help to get the shift as well. It's all collectively part of the process we can do tapping um i have bongos in my room so you know some people who are a bit more spiritually aligned they like to use the bongos um you know africans have been doing this stuff for years they've been doing this stuff they know how to heal trauma they're in tribes they're dancing they're singing they're getting the bilateral stimulation around you know with with their mood with their body movement and the way that they're able to shift things. We actually have, we're actually in the city, we're less evolved in some ways, you know, living in the city um, because we haven't adapted to this way of processing everyday stuff. And if we process some of the stuff from childhood, where this stuff comes from, our belief system changes as an adult and then we don't have to focus on willpower you know like we don't have to focus on right this is what i have to do to lose this bit of weight and go to the gym it comes organically and it doesn't come from a place of stress or fear it comes from a place of joy and acceptance of that part of the journey we're not like wanting to go from A to Z. We're okay with doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, if that makes sense. It does. Um, the couples and relationship part, how is that different from what you do normally? What challenges do you see there? And how is it different, your approach, VS, like classic uh, relationship coaching or therapy? Yeah, so I uh, couples EMDR is really new, and and I love this. Um, it, it it's fantastic. But what you do need is you need two couples who are open to it first. So how it differs is you need two couples who are, they don't have to be on the same frequency, let's say, or the same page, whatever you want to call it. But they do need to both be very open to it. Um. They would be facing each other and each person as they're reprocessing would be the equipment for the other person. So rather than having the EMs, the eye movements or, or the clinician doing the work or the tapping, whichever it might be, they are the equipment for the other person. And the clinician is there to act as a director. And each person, as they're reprocessing, while the other person is the equipment, they're also the active listener. They're also having to sit there listening to content that could be triggering for them. And 
even though they may feel the need to get defensive, the agreement in the session is that they're able to sit with what is coming up with their for their partner and be with their partner and learn to actively listen and learn to be present with their partner. And, and, and that is monumental to the shifts that the couples get in order to improve the relationship. What challenges do you often see in couples? Uh, what couples come in for, the types of things they come in for, Charles, yeah. Okay, so um, there is, okay, the common one is uh, in, there's been infidelity. There's been infidelity, but they want to move on from it. And both are, are wanting to stay together. They've already made the decision and they're wanting to move on from this. So that's a big one. Um, in, imbalance in terms of uh, it could be to do with uh, chores, responsibilities. So usually responsibility, responsibilities are a big one and an imbalance in that and how that how they can um, be aligned with that. Um, one partner feeling that um, they're not equal to the other partner. So having a sense of equality uh, is another one. And um, also one other is having the same kind of argument over and over again, noticing a thematic argument that's coming up and not being able to break the cycle of that argument or several arguments that they're finding um, could be about the the kids and mismatching values let's say makes a lot of sense i've heard that a lot um, from other psychotherapists and when it comes to cheating, that might be that they made the decision, but one partner, the one that's been cheated, hasn't forgiven yet. And that's always very hard. There's a lot of anger and resentment. When it comes to high performance executives, what challenges do they face? And how do you help them resolve these problems? Yeah, you know, and I get asked this question a lot. And this is the funny thing, right? Because we, you know, in some ways, we, as a society, we separate ourselves by labels and identities, right? But I, I have to say that, you know, a lot of this is just that I serve this clientele, but their issues are no different to anybody else's. And that's what connects us all, you know? Their, their, their challenges are, are no different. And, you know, even people with millions of dollars in their bank account have financial concerns. Yeah, so, I mean, their lifestyle is, I mean, if they don't have like 10,000 this week, they'll be worried, you know, or if they don't have 100K because their lifestyle costs so much. Yeah, and they have challenges in relationships and business. And they have, um, you know, sort of uh, issues with not being able to spend enough time with their kids and their husband or their wife. Uh, and how can they find that time? And again, that comes back to a belief system. I need to work myself to death in order to continue to provide for my family and create a legacy for generations to come. And what I do is I help them to see that if, if we can provide balance for their emotional, mental, and physical ecosystems for future generations to come, everything else falls into place. And that's super hard to the providers are always hustling. Uh, their parents have told them to go in such a direction and always excel at pretty much everything. So yeah, quite quite the hard one. Do you see stress? Do you see burnouts? Do you see fighting with colleagues? <laughs> when they've when they've come for an intensive, it doesn't feel so so challenging because because we know we know what to work on. Um but yeah, do I do I see what sorry Charles, what was that last bit? Burnout. Uh yeah, burnout is one stress, a lot of stress. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as someone who works closely with attachment as well and relationships, um, even with individuals, we're talking about the relationship to self. 
uh, one thing that I find is that the the burnout again stems from a collect a collection of unprocessed stuff over the years, you know, and the clients I have who meditate, it shifts a lot quicker. Meditation shifts it a lot quicker because meditation does that. But you see, many of my clients in the city, they don't, you know, they can't, they're not able to find the discipline to stick to the meditation. So this is almost a way of kind of getting to that self uh, transcendence without the meditation. Uh, they still sometimes, some of them will need something afterwards, but majority don't need to maintain it because their belief systems changed. So then, you know, the belief system around burnout as well can be that uh, there's something underneath it that is not allowing them to rest. You know, I work with older people as well in their 50s and 60s, and some of them I notice have these beliefs about rest and sleep and work. You know, no, 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 we should be suffering. Work work is, you know, effort and painful. And, you know, there is this grind and this hustle. And, you know, no, we shouldn't go to sleep. We shouldn't rest. It's not okay to, to rest and switch off and, you know, be comfortable. And we must, even if when we are resting, we have to guilt trip ourselves of when is the next time we're going to get productive. You know, and not even older people have this. Younger people have this too. But if we don't get that rest, it's called rest and digest in our field. If we don't get that rest, right, then then again, it's like it's like the process of digestion. If you don't digest your food, you're not going to be feeling too good. So it's it's the same thing. We have to rest. And that is part of the belief system with the burnout and the stress. Fully agree. And yeah, there's moments in which meditation is very useful in life especially when you're stressed and if it's not part of your routine you may go out of the guardrails so quite important to implement that even as a high performer and yeah always check sleep you know just check in on yourself check your mental performances when you sleep vs when you don't sleep well and you'll do the math pretty quickly uh kelly joe where can people find out more about you online uh tidylodge.com yeah, tidylodge.com. It's all there. Uh, you can search Kelly Joe Coney Khan or tidylodge.com and you'll you'll find me.